Hello and welcome to The Know. Here are today's top stories. A 13-year-old girl has been charged with attempted murder in Wales. A trial for the world's first personalised melanoma vaccine is underway. And the Scottish Labour Party has tabled a motion of no confidence in Humza Youssef. Keep watching to find out more. A 13-year-old girl has been charged with three counts of attempted murder after stabbing two teachers and a pupil at a school in Ammonford, Wales. All victims were taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries and have since been discharged. The girl was also charged with possession of a bladed article on school premises as she appeared in court on Friday, confirmed the Crown Prosecution Service. Hours after the young girl's arrest, a 15-year-old boy was also arrested and held in custody after police received reports about messages on social media referring to the stabbing. Shortly after the stabbing, the school went into lockdown until police investigated and made an arrest. Once students were allowed home, Superintendent Ross Evans provided an update on the situation. We received a call just after 11.20am advising us people were injured following an incident at the school. Emergency services immediately attended and the school was locked down for the safety of everyone on the premises. Two teachers and a teenage pupil were taken to hospital with stab wounds. Their injuries are not life-threatening. A teenage girl has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder and currently remains in police custody. A knife has been recovered in evidence. The teachers injured in the stabbing were later confirmed as Deputy Head Fiona Elias and Special Needs Teacher Liz Hopkin. In a message shared on the school's website, Head Teacher James Durbridge praised staff and students for their calm and mature response. Teachers and staff returned to the school on Friday in preparation for students returning on Monday. Teacher Steve Young has become the first person to trial the world's first personalised mRNA vaccine against melanoma. Young, who's 52, took part in the trial after having a melanoma growth removed from his scalp in August last year. The shot aims to help the immune system recognise and remove any remaining cancerous cells. I feel like I'm actively doing something to, to give it a kicking, basically, because I could have just chosen to sit back, have a scan every three months and just see what, you know, see what happened. And I just felt that, you know, at least by being on a trial, I'm, I'm actively doing something that, you know, it, it, I'm having a fight basically. I'm, I'm, I'm having a fight with, my, with whatever it was that gave me a melanoma, you know. I mean, I could be cancer free right now, but we don't know for sure, so that's why I'm having the immunotherapy treatment. But it just, it gave me the sense of, of action because I'm, I'm one of these people who just has to always be doing something. I, I couldn't just sit back. And, and I just think it's a great thing. I think it's, a, it's really exciting, really exciting. My, my geek radar is, uh, is off the scale. <laughs> the trial is being held at the University College London Hospital, where doctors will also be administrating another drug called Keytruda, which works by helping the immune system to kill cancer cells. The UK part of the trial hopes to recruit at least 70 people across the country, with patients required to have had a high-risk melanoma surgically removed within the last 12 weeks. Dr Heather Shaw explained that JAV is truly personalised, adding it is absolutely custom built for the patient, you couldn't give this to the next patient in the line because you wouldn't expect it to work. The Scottish Labour Party has confirmed it will table a motion of no confidence in the Scottish Government, with the Scottish Conservatives also drawing up a motion of no confidence. It comes after First Minister Humza Yousaf collapsed the power-sharing agreement with the Scottish Greens, called the Butte House Agreement. And when it comes to our agreement with the Scottish Green Party, I believe that the benefits have outweighed the compromises. When I said that the agreement was worth its weight in gold, I meant it. However, it is now my judgment that the balance has shifted. The Butte House Agreement was intended to provide stability to the Scottish Government, and it has made possible a number of achievements, but it has served its purpose. It's no longer guaranteeing a stable arrangement in Parliament. The events of recent days have made that clear. And therefore, after careful consideration, I believe that going forward, it is in the best interests of the people of Scotland to pursue a different arrangement. 
The Butte House Agreement was signed in August 2021 by First Minister at the time, Nicola Sturgeon. The agreement made pledges on the climate emergency, economic recovery from COVID, child poverty, the natural environment, energy and the constitution. However, a no-confidence vote won't be held till early next week and it is currently unclear whether Labour has enough votes to bring down the government. If the Scottish government lost the vote, Humza Youssef would be forced to resign and the party given 28 days to elect a new First Minister. No, I fully intend to not just uh, win that vote, but I intend to fight uh, to make sure that the government stays up, not just uh, the government continues to deliver on the priorities of the people, uh, like, for example, investing in affordable housing. So there's all that political game playing happening from the opposition that will not be taking part in it. We'll be getting, uh, of course, on with the job and when the vote comes, I fully intend to win. Thanks for watching The Know. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to The Mirror for more daily news updates.